<coughs> okay, so this is our first problem. Yeah, we, if we have only single function, like a integral sine x, integral cosine x, uh, you can quickly get the answer. But if there's x there, additional to the sine x, cosine x, then you have to use the integration of part to get rid of x. To get rid of x, you have to differentiate. Okay, and uh, so this is a uh, this is the idea. You have to differentiate, and then you get uh, you can you know similarly you can yeah you let the u then dv then you figure out what is the v v should be sine x. Okay, and then use the integration part. You get the first step. You get x times x minus the integral of sine x. Then entire derivative of negative sine x will be cosine x. And similarly, you can solve the problem. Uh, similarly, we can evaluate the integrals of, in general, x to the power k cosine x dx, x to the power k sine x dx. Okay? And just step by step, you, you, you differentiate xk, then you reduce the power from x to the power k to x to the power k minus one. Eventually you get x to the power zero, then it's that, right? Okay, so same idea, let's try this. Okay, so very first step, this is a dv, this is a u, and then uv, right? uv minus v and du, okay? So let's do this. It's x squared. V is going to be sine x, okay? So sine x. What is du? Du use x squared, right? So here use x squared, so du is 2x dx. So then there still is an x there. It's okay, there is x there. You can, you can put x here, right? And then twice sine x dx. So this is your, again, your dv, right? You interchange that, right? And this is going to be u, that's a dv again. So here, uh, yeah, here u equals x squared, because this is a part. And here u is going to be x, v equals negative cosine x. Because when you differentiate negative cosine x, you get sine x. All right, so now you apply the formula again. That's a uv, right? U times v, so x times negative sine at negative cosine x minus, okay, v negative cosine x times du, so dx, okay? <coughs> yeah, be careful about the, about the negative sign. Uh, so it will be x, uh, if you multiply this, so let's remove the parenthesis first. Okay. If we remove the parenthesis. So you will get plus 2x plus x and plus 2, no, minus 2, because they have negative, 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 and the cosine x dx. So the entire derivative of cosine x is going to sine x. So then you, you get x squared sine x plus 2x cosine x minus 2 sine x and plus constant. So just get more terms. Okay, this is about the integral of x to the power k times trigonometric times sine x or cosine x. <laughs> and uh, similarly, <laughs> uh, you can do x to the power k e to the x dx, okay? So you can also do like x to the power k e to the x dx. <coughs> it's actually much simpler, okay? Same idea. Okay, I'm not going to complete, okay? You, you have it. And this is the way be dv, that's a du. And that will be u, okay? So same idea. Now what is different is is this way, x to the power k natural of x, then this is different, okay? 
you don't like natural X, it's harder to find anti-derivative. You know, if you if you anti-derivative natural natural log X, so you have, what you have to do is you have to in, interchange. Uh, this will be dv w. Okay, then if you differentiate nature log of x, you get a win of x. That's great. Okay. Uh, so let's complete this problem. K is an arbitrary number. I assume that k is not going to be negative one. Okay, I just assume that otherwise the problem is different. K is not going to be negative. Let's 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 solve this problem. Okay, we can even get a very general formula. Okay. So what is v? Dv should be equal to x to power k dx, right? And clearly, yeah, you can write down like that. Dv equals x k dx, and the u equals nature of x. So what is what is v? You can choose v to be now v is the antiderivative of x to the power k. So V is actually is going to be one over K, right? And that's the reason I cannot assume K equals negative one. When K equals negative one, K plus one is zero. So it doesn't make sense, right? So now you get UV minus VDU, right? So what is U? U is going to be natural of X. What is a V? V is this, okay, minus V, right? What is du? Du is the derivative of natural of x, it's the one of x, dx, okay? <clears throat> After you simplify, you still get x to the power k. Right? Then the entire, you know the entire derivative of this function. It's a, it's a one over, yeah, it's going to be one over k plus one. Okay. So this is uh, what's going on here. Hmm. All right, yeah. So it's, ne uh, it's natural of x minus and this is the antiderivative and plus constant. Okay, <clears throat> so this is going to be k plus one and now x. All right, so this is answer, okay? And you can check that when you differentiate against them. So that's the only difference here. If there's natural, uh, yeah, you are now going to differentiate x to the power k to reduce power actually you can you have to increase the power but then you have the differential natural log of x the derivative of the natural log of x is going to be a power function all right so that's all about the review you know from uh, for the last section so what we are going to do is today is uh we are focused on the integral of the sine cosine and the combination of these functions okay first of all for the simplicity I want to just mention that the integral of cosine kx dx is just equal to k sine kx, slightly more general than the one I guess. You can use the substitution to get it, okay? Another one is the integral of sine kx dx, and you have a negative, and here is cosine kx plus six. So when you differentiate, you will get sine kx, okay? All right, so now, for this section, we have to be very familiar with all the formulas we learned in Mass 154 or 159, okay? It's about trigonometric geometry, okay? So let, we know how to evaluate the integral of a sine x, integral of a cosine x. I'm going to, yeah, step by step, right? Everybody knows the yeah, integral of sine. So it's how about integral of, yes, cosine. Uh, let's be, yeah, let's focus on sine x. I like sine x, okay? Integral of sine x, integral of sine cube x, and integral of sine to the fourth power x, dx, and so on. You shouldn't know how to do this, 
right? And then integral cosine squares, integral cosine cubics, integral cosine to the fourth power. Then the mixture, maybe cosine x, sine square, maybe cosine square, sine x, something. Okay, and the mixture, all those. So let's let's do the first one. It's a sine x. Okay. I don't have a formula, direct formula can get the anti-derivative uh, anti of this function. So what I'm gonna do, I have to change the square, okay, to a <coughs> linear combination of some trigonometric functions. Then I can evaluate the integral, okay? So the formula we are going to use is cosine 2x equals cosine square x minus sine square x. This have a two forms. This also can be equal to one minus two sine square x. So this is a sine square, it's here. So if you see sine square x, then you solve for sine square x. We get another formula. And this is one minus cosine two x divided by two. Okay. So, on the right hand side, the expression, there's no square there. Yes, there's a cosine kx, that's fine. I already told you, you know, it's a, it's a uh, the integral, we already know that, I listed above, okay? So sine square equal this, therefore you put the integral on both sides, you get integral of one half, and the minus integral of one half of cosine. 2x dx, okay? So the first term is constant. The second term, uh, cosine 2x, right? I already mentioned cosine x is sine. 2x divided by 2, uh, 2x, okay? And plus constant. So this is, a, a, this is a, 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 an answer, okay? Okay, so this is the answer. And uh, you can simplify a little bit. Some students prefer to write, here's a, here's a quarter. And the sine 2x is also no sine x cosine <coughs> x plus c. So you cancel it out and you will get half of x and one half sine x, x plus c. You were asking me what is the right answer. Well, either, either of them is fine. Okay, you can keep a sine two x. You can also keep a sine x cosine x. Okay, so the final form of the of the expressions will be possibly be different. So different students should give me different answers. Okay. So when we grade the final exam, for example, we only grade one problem. Right? So the instructors will memorize all the solutions almost. So he, if he finds some similarity of solutions, and if we plot this exam <laughs> to be compressed. <laughs> okay. So, you know, of course, most of them will get four steps, right? But that's, there are two students just miss the equality sign the third line why they are both missed the equality in the same place, right? So we have to, we, we have to, do that sit together or not? Then we find that sit together. <laughs> we have to do some investigation. So anyway, so this is a, a you should give a complete independent solution for every problem. Okay, either this is okay, that is okay, doesn't matter, okay? Now, is this a unique way to solve the problem? I don't know. Yeah, we can, we may can try a different way to solve it, okay? Uh, but probably sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, you can try integration by parts, but that's sine x, right? <coughs> right, how do you do the integral part? Maybe you can try. So this is a like a sine square x dx. I'm not sure, right? It works or not, right? And that's one way to do it. You separate sine x to 
sine square x to sine x times. And then, then you find the, then you find out, uh, huh, this is a TV. Let's try now, who knows, right? That's it. So there's the work or not, right? Then u equals sine x, v equals, how can I get sine x? I have to make, put negative cosine x, right? Then dv equals sine x dx. All right, so let's use that. So uv minus, okay, and the v du, okay? So let's do that. So uv, u is going to be sine x, v is cosine x, okay? Right? And, uh, and uh, then uh, minus negative cosine x, du is going to be, uh, du is that sine x becomes cosine x dx. That's a du, right? That's a du, okay. Great, so what do we get? Negative sine x cosine x plus integral cosine x. Wow, I changed sine square x to integral cosine square x. That's okay, and you remember it's called iterated. You know, you can change the cosine x to sine. But there's no bigger difference between cosine square and the sine square, do you agree, right? No bigger difference, why? Cosine square is going to be one minus sine square, right? So, that's great. So it's, it, it's working, okay? So what I get here is negative sine x cosine x plus integral y is x, then integral sine square x, I don't know. But I begin with a positive integral sine square x and I end up with something minus, right? Integral sine x. So I can move this term uh, because this side is integral sine square x dx, right? So I move this term to the left hand side and double it and divide by two, I solve the problem, right? So, Integration by parts works here. And I had to put a constant. And then let's compare what we got above. We got the same answer. You see, look at this top line, right? Very top line, that's my answer, All right? Now I also have the same answer. So for a same problem, there are multiple, multiple ways to do that. You can use the integration parts. You can, uh, you can use the, just use a formula from trigonometric geometry, the double angle formula or half angle formula, right? And to change the sine square to something without square. Then you can evaluate it. Or you can separate the sine square x sine square x is sine x times sine x. Yes. Hmm? Where's the one half from? Oh, you see, I have this one negative, it's a positive. You move this term to the left hand side, you double the sine, integral sine square x. Then you divide by two. Then you get the integral of sine square x. Okay? Yeah, you move this term to the left hand side, you double two, integral of sine square x, and the right hand side just negative sine x cosine x plus x, but you have to divide by two. Yeah. So you just solve for, solve that integral, uh, solve this equation for the integral. So you get the same answer. So now for the same problem, we have two different methods to solve. I did not know that before I try, let's say I just said try because I, I don't remember. I did that before, you know, I use it and it works, okay? Sometimes if more exercise do, you more experience, yeah. But my experience maybe, uh, I, I, I don't remember this mess, but it works, okay? If it does not work, just give up, you know, you waste one minute. <laughs> but you learn the lesson, okay, you shouldn't try this. <coughs> okay. So integral of sine qx dx. And now, I don't have a formula for sine cube x. You know, trying to express it in terms of, in terms of something, right? In terms of uh, sine, cosine, or without square. I don't have this, I don't remember that, okay? I do remember sine square x is going to be 
1 minus cosine 2 x divided by 2, okay? But I, I don't remember that sine cube x. Now, how many methods we can try? Let's try this. I use a second idea, trying to use the integral by part. So this is going to be integral of sine squared sine x dx, okay? Maybe this, this is a trivial, okay? Let's see. And uh, I don't need the integration part, okay? So sine square is going to be one minus cosine square x and sine x dx, okay? So use the, use the substitutions you now. Here, you let u to be cosine x, du equals uh, negative sine x dx, right? So your answer here will be one minus u squared negative du. Okay? So this is just a polynomial, a integral of a polynomial, integral of u squared minus one du, entire zero u squared is one third u cubed minus u plus constant. All right, so what is u? u is going to be one third cosine cube x minus cosine x plus c. Okay, great. So this is our answer. What do we use here? We separate the function in here. Sine cube x is going to be sine square x times cosine. X. And I did not use the integration type part. Okay, I, I did a uh, after, yeah, I rewrite sine squared. Then I realized that I just need a substitution. Okay. Now, can we solve this problem use as a method? Can I express sine cube x just as a linear combination of a sine cosine only without square? Yes, it's possible, but it really needs other formulas. Okay, can I use the integration by parts? Because integral of sine cube x dx is gonna be sine square x sine x dx, right? And you can say, okay, I'm gonna try to use the integration by parts. Integration by part, I'm not sure that works. Let's try, okay? So that's dv, that's u. When you differentiate sine square x, I still get lots of terms. But maybe at some point you still have to use substitution. So let's see. So u equals sine square x, v equals, uh, v equals negative cosine x, okay? So that's what dv equals sine x. Uh, that's going to be uv minus vdu, okay? Let's try. And uh, sine square x, negative cosine x minus negative cosine x. Derivative sine, the derivative sine square x will be twice sine x, cosine x, and dx, okay? That's the d, du, okay? That's the du. That's okay, looks like more complicated, but you get negative sine square x, cosine x, negative, negative becomes positive twice. Then what I have here, cosine square x, sine x dx. I think at this point, you should use substitution because sine square x, okay? Uh, if you don't want to use a substitution, uh, you know, you can use substitution here. Sine x dx is going to be derivative cosine x. You can use something. But if you do not use a substitution, what you can do? You will, I just think like multiple ways to do the same answer, okay? You, if, you can also, you see, you begin with a sine cube x. If you end up with sine cube x, it's okay. You probably can solve for sine cube x, okay? So you can use a one, one minus sine square x, okay? Yeah, let's, let's do this. So you will get one times sine x minus sine cube x here, dx. 
Great. Okay. So the integral of sine x is going to be cosine, negative cosine x. Yeah, so it's negative 2 cosine. And here's a minus 2 integral of sine qx dx. All right, so here's the integral of sine qx dx. So this term, that term move together. You get 3 integral of sine qx dx equals negative sine square x cosine x minus 2 cosine x. Okay, now, yeah. Uh, we usually should put a constant here um, because the indefinite integral is a family of solutions. Uh, just to find the way it's okay, then add a constant. So integral of sine qx dx equals one third sine, sine square x cosine x minus two thirds cosine x plus another constant. Uh, is this correct answer? Yes, I guarantee. Yeah. But is, does it look like the one we got before? No. <laughs> but can we change it these to the previous answers? Yes. Right? The so one we got here is positive one third cosine cube x minus cosine x. So the question is positive one third cosine cube x, and I, I forgot, it's so minus cosine x. Yeah. So another constant. Yeah. You think about it. The answer is yes. Okay. All you have to do is just change your sine squares to one minus cosine square. Okay, then you get that. So the final answer would be quite uh, yeah, the, the, the form of the answer would be different. Now, if you do not apply the 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 you do not repress cosine square x by one minus sine square x, then you have to use a substitution. If you use substitution, you still end up with the same answer but in different form. Okay, I just said that that's just many ways to solve this problem. At least you should find the one way, right? So the integral, let's come back here. Just integral of a cosine square x sine x, right? Now if you are just given the integral like that, this is a, what we have here, right? Over there, right? So this is a, you know, right? We have this. I just copied that, okay? So if you're just given that, how can you value integral? You have to use a, uh, you have to use a substitution, okay? Use a substitution. So the nature of substitution is that W to be cosine x or negative cosine x. Okay, then dw equals negative sine x dx. So this integral becomes w squared negative dw. All right. So there will be negative, will be negative, uh, integral of, of that, okay. So the entire derivative is W cubed. All right, so now you put W there, it's going to be cosine X. So this is answer. Now there are other formulas uh, I want to mention is cosine uh, alpha plus beta. Well, let me begin with a sign. Okay, those are also formulas you should know from trigonometric geometry. So we, are, we go over all the formulas. Sine alpha plus beta is gonna be sine alpha cosine beta 
plus cosine alpha sine beta. So if we change to negative sine, so you will get negative, okay? Now, what does it give to you? This is the important formula, right? Uh, if you take different equation one, equation two, okay, if equation one minus equation two, you will get sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta equal twice of cosine alpha sine beta. That's all we need, okay? We do have cosine alpha, sine beta, and equals one half sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta. Okay. Can you memorize this formula? It's difficult, so that's why I just derive it. Okay. I do memorize the first top four, two formulas. Yeah, sine. You know, do you remember cosine alpha minus beta? Cosine alpha plus beta, uh, probably not useful here, but you can still should know that. It's gonna be cosine alpha, cosine beta, and uh, I think it's minus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay. How do you check this is minus, not plus? You can choose a special angle, like alpha equals beta. When alpha equals beta, you get cosine square alpha minus sine square. That's great, two, right? So uh, then you also have you also have uh, this cosine alpha minus beta. It's because cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha sine beta. And here you probably can get two type of formulas, okay? Two type of formulas. If you add them together. 1 plus 2, you get twice of cosine alpha, cosine beta. So you have to sum of cosine alpha plus beta and plus cosine alpha minus beta. But if you do the subtraction, equation 2 minus equation 1, then I get a double of sine alpha. So sine alpha, sine beta. minus cosine alpha plus beta, I think. All right, so why are those formulas useful? Because from integral, using if you want to integrate on both sides, the left-hand side will call that to function. So the right-hand side is leading combination of a single uh, function. That's why you can, you can uh, uh, easily uh, integrate, okay? For example, if I want to use above formula, where's my formula? This is a formula, right? Okay, and this is a formula, right? So like the integral of cosine x sine 2x, okay? Now, if you use the above formula, uh, this will be the integral of half of sine 3x, right? and the minus sine alpha minus beta, it's negative x. Okay? Then you can easily get the answer. Right? You can easily get an answer. If you know, you can separate as a sum. So the integral of, uh, yeah, let's rewrite this again. I'm going to take this out. It's gonna be sine 3x plus sine x dx. So it's just these two terms. Entire derivative of sine is cosine. It's negative cosine, negative. And cosine 3x divided by three, cosine x divided by one, right? So that is answer. Now, is this is a unique answer, unique form? Since sine 2x is so special. I can solve the problem in a different way. There's multiple ways to do that, see, okay? So sine x, sine 2x is twice 
of sines and cosines, right? Yeah, just because this is a two sine x cosine, so that's why you have a cosine squared. But when you see that, huh, I can use substitution. Okay, so after this section, you probably know all the formulas from trigonometric algebra. <laughs> yeah. So then you use a substitution for that, right? And w equals cosine x. Then dw equals negative sine x dx. So that will be twice of w squared d dot negative w, right? It's pretty thin. It's going to be negative one third, two thirds, right? Okay. And then, so when you come out from the class that we compare answer with the classmates answer, say, oh, how come I did only one term? You have a two thirds cosine three x over three. Okay. So you'll be, you'll be scared, right? So those two are same answers, okay? Just different way to solve the problem. Just different way to solve the problem. You see, for, for integrals of this function, but eventually it can, it can change from one to another, okay? For example, cosine three x, you can change to Cosine cube x. Right. You can change that. Right. So those two are the same. Okay, they're equal. Okay. I'm going to go back to integral of sine cube x dx, right? I try to use, I try to modify the sine cube x to solve the problem. Okay. What I'm going to do is, I don't like cube x, right? So I know it's going to be sine square x sine x, okay? But sine square x is going to be one minus cosine two x sine. So already from cube to product to function, right? Step by step. So I get one half of sine x minus one half of cosine two x sine x. I know I can separate this, okay? So I go back to find the formula. Where's my formula? I want to write as a linear combination of single trigonometric functions. Maybe two x, three x inside the parentheses. That's okay. So I go back to the formula. Where's my formula? Cosine alpha minus uh, times sine alpha. Cosine alpha, cosine alpha, sine, sine beta. So that means I have to have a sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta, right? Okay, so I memorize that now. Okay, I'm going to, and the one half sine alpha plus beta, it's gonna be three x minus sine alpha minus beta, just x. Not too bad, okay? So I got, well, so sine x, sine x, that can be combined. One quarter plus. So I think it's three over four sine x minus a quarter sine three x, okay? After you simplify. So that's good, part. okay? We can evaluate the integral of sine cube x so we have a four sine x dx minus quarter sine three x dx. Okay, and we can get three over four negative cos x, and here's quarter negative cosine three x divided by three, and plus constant. So this is another expression for integral of sine cube x. So there are many different forms there. There are many different forms there for the, for the integral of sine cube x. This is the third form, okay? Integral of sine cube, okay? This is the, yeah.
Yeah, remember we have uh yeah, so the answer works. Okay, it's gonna be negative three over four cosine x plus twelve cosine three x and plus constant. But the answer we got, one of the answer I remember is one third one third of uh one third of uh, uh, cosine cube x minus cosine. X, okay. Uh, we can change this expression for the answer. If you don't like the three x there, just change it. Okay. How do you change it? Three x is going to be x plus two x. Okay. It's just step by step. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. So it would be cosine uh, x plus 2x, right? Cosine alpha plus beta is going to be cosine x, cosine 2x, and uh, I think it's minus sine x, sine 2x. Okay? Yeah. And if you only like, if you only prefer sine, uh, yeah, sine two x. Yeah, sine two x is two sine x plus sine. So then you see that you know you can modify this function, okay? And this will be cosine two x will be uh, one uh, two cosine square x. Yeah, minus one. Yeah, I, I stop here. I don't want to. Just getting more complicated, but eventually you can simplify to cosine cube x. Okay, you get cosine cube x. And uh, yeah, I think yeah. you only can have a cosine cube x. Yeah, let's go. Let me, let me finish. We still have a time. Cosine x plus one half. Cosine x. And here is, uh, it's going to be two cosine square x minus one, right? Uh, not, not divided by two, just the. Uh, yeah, cosine two. All right, so it's twice cosine square x minus one, right? Everything's here. And then this will be two sine x cosine x. So I have a two here. Sine x cosine x is going to be one minus cosine square x and the cosine x. Wow. Now, you only see cosine x there, right? You only see cosine x there. After you simplify it, uh, I'm pretty sure you will get uh, you only get two terms either x cube uh, cosine cube x and or cosine x okay so let's see and this will be one third uh, uh, one or six cosine cube x and minus and then minus two cosine x plus two cosine cube x. Okay, so that's only cube x. Oh, then divide by, well, everything divide by two. Okay, let me check. One over six. One over six. Yeah, one over six. Yeah, one over six. Okay. So let's see how many, yeah, one over six, one over x is one third, right? And then, and uh, then, uh, then one over 12 minus one over, let's do this computation. 
and plus 12 two, so three over 12 is one quarter. One quarter minus three over quarters is going to be uh, negative two, so it's minus one half, I think cosine x plus six. Okay, and uh, did we get this answer? No. So one half, where's the one half from? Uh, minus, oh, minus, there, yeah, minus, that's so minus, negative. Okay, so it's actually it's no one half, just cosine x. Okay, the sign is this. Okay, so that's it. And then you ask, you can look at the problem we did before that, you will see the same answer. So there are multiple uh, ways to solve the same problem. Okay, and sometimes you get different answers, looks like different. You have to modify, modify, then you get the same. Yeah, you get the same uh, expression. How about, how about integral of sine to the fourth power? Okay. The integral of sine to the fourth power is going to be, right? I don't like sine to the fourth power. So how can I do that? Well, I just square, right? It's going to be sine square and square, right? Everybody know that. And the sine square can be written in the form one minus cosine two x squared dx, okay? Then you square it and then you only see square, you don't see cube. So it's quarter, you take it out. It's a one minus twice cosine two x, that's term nice then cosine square to it, okay? Then cosine square, we don't like cosine square, we change it to this cosine, just cosine. It's half of uh, cosine four x, plus what, okay, divided by two. So now you can write down entire derivative of each term. First term is one half plus one is two, uh, three over two, so three over two x. And then minus, I think that this will be sine two x, okay? Entire derivative of sine two x will be, and the plus, and here's one half, we have to divide by quarter, and sine four x, okay? And then plus constant. You can write down all the terms quickly. So this is answer, okay? And you can see. Right, let's move on. <laughs> Just so we get sine to the fifth x. <laughs> All right, sine. You know, do we have another way to evaluate the sine to the uh, to the fourth power? Maybe, and maybe more complicated. But this is a simple. How about sine to the fifth? Right. Sine to the fifth. Uh, I don't know, right? I can, I can separate them, okay? But I don't want to use the integration parts. Not always useful, very useful. But when you see that, use a substitution. You immediately can see them, okay? Uh, the reason is, you want to get sine x dx, you have to say w equals cosine x, right? And dw equals negative sine x dx, right? But sine to the fourth power can be changed to cosine squared, okay? So the integral here is sine square xn squared, the same idea, right? 
and sine square is going to be one minus cosine square. So now, since w is cosine x, one minus w square and square and negative dw. And now you get the polynomial. Polynomial is fine, right? You can evaluate. All you have to do is square it. One minus two w square plus w to the fourth power. And you have a negative sign dw. So the entire derivative of this function will be it's polynomial. So you can you can uh, replace w by cosine x. Oops. I should say that this is not the unique form of the answer. Okay. Different approaches give you different answers, but this is probably the simplest way to solve the problem. If you use a uh, integration of a parts, then you differentiate uh, sine to the fourth power. You probably end up with a different form of solution. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you really want to try integration by part. It probably works, okay? This is your dv, that's a u, okay? <laughs> and the v is going to be negative cosine x, u equals sine to the fourth power, okay? You interchange that, right? Okay, so let's see, what do we get? Negative sine to the fourth power and the cosine x minus this positive cosine x. Differentiate the derivative of sine to the fourth power is a four sine cube x cosine x dx. Now you end up with an integral right, plus four sine cube x cosine square x dx. The question is, how can I evaluate this integral? Then you look at textbook. You find out that there is a problem like that only. Okay, so let's stop here. Today, let's begin with another problem. Evaluate this integral. Okay, evaluate this integral. How can I do that? <laughs> If you can do that, then you solve the problem with the previous problem, right? You can always express this product as a linear combination of sine and cosine, okay? Uh, uh, Kx. I still want to tell you there are multiple ways to, to solve, get the final answer. But most natural way to do is, based on my experience, it'd be sine square x, cosine square x, sine x dx. I use a substitution, okay? So I let w to be cosine x dw equals negative sine x dx, okay? So this is a part we are here. In front of that, I'm lucky I have a cosine square, it's okay, just a double square. But sine square can be changed to cosine square. Sine square is essential with the cosine square. It's the only small difference. Okay, so I'm going to get one minus sine square. One minus cosine square. Okay, 
So the answer will be one minus u square, a uh, double square, double square, and negative the double. Okay. So you get a polynomial. You get a polynomial. So for every problem, there's multiple ways to do. Okay. Some are complicated, some are simpler. So don't tell me you have no clue. <laughs> Just try different ways. That's, you summarize it, okay? When you when you do uh, when you do the homework, you know, get home. Where the way I study is, I just go through the notes I got, and then I summarize some key ideas. Hey, this type of function. Then I start to do the homework, okay? And my, one of the ideas can be applied to the homework problem. So you multiply this out, you get negative. You put a negative sign here. W squared W to the fourth power dW. It's a polynomial. So you get one third W cubed plus one fifth to W, right? So the end time derivative, you know, the, uh, yeah, W is a cosine cube X plus one over X. It's that. Then you will say, okay, then how about this? I don't have a sine cube here, I only have a sine square. I cannot separate, right? If you only have a sine square, there are some, there are still multiple ways to solve the problem. If you don't, you know, something try, okay, I'm gonna change to one minus, sine square x dx. Then you end up with a sine to the fourth power dx. Then you have a sine square x. And those are the two problems already did it, right? If you memorize the answer, just put answer there. <laughs> if you cannot, you know, we, we did an integral sine square, we did an integral sine to the fourth power at the very beginning. Right? We can do it, right? Yeah. So if you end up, if you go in that way, then you have to know what is the integral of sine square, and, and it's pretty more, it's more complicated. You have two separate projects right now, <laughs> okay? All right, you have to finish that project, and finish that, and then end up, oh, I don't have a five minutes. Time is gone. <laughs> you cannot solve it, okay? At home, you can do that, you know, maybe spend 10 minutes finally to get answer. But the answer is not, does not match with the one you give in the book. Guarantee. Okay, so it's hard to check whether you get the right answer or not. Right? You have to trust yourself. If you feel confident, you have the right idea. Okay, I just if the answer is wrong, maybe just a matter of the computation. Okay, I tell you another way to 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 double check is to if you know how to use the maple, just enter your answer in the final derivative answer and simplify. Or mathematics, okay? Then you will guess is, gets uh, sine square, cosine square. Maybe that's the right answer, okay? So that's the only way to check whether the answer is correct. You have to find you have to differentiate. So I'm not going to do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I use I combine sine x, cosine x, and square dx. Okay? What I get is just a single function half of sine 2x squared, okay? If I do that, okay, sine 2x square, right? How can I get the double angle formula, right? Sine 2x, sine square, you know, I remember sine square alpha equals Cosine two alpha, right? So sine, yeah, this is sine square two x dx. I also can change it to cosine without square. Okay, without square. Again, we are we are going to go over that formula. 
Right, so the integral half of one minus cosine double of the angle will be four x. Okay. And I pick constant out. It's going to be one over eight. Integral of one will be x. Integral of cosine four x will be negative sine four x divided by four. But, so you have to show your step, step by step. Don't just put answer there. We, first of all, the grade that we do not, probably do not know if this answer is correct or not. Yeah, I tell you honestly, because we don't have a time to, to, to check it, simplify it, just find a derivative. And, uh, and uh, so if you just put the answer there, we're not going to give a credit. You have to show me the detail. How to get them? Maybe like a three or four students get the same answer. Maybe it's okay. Yeah, probably it's the right answer. <laughs> Otherwise, it's harder to tell this correct answer. Not. It's not, okay. Okay. But if you show the details, I can clearly see how to get this answer right step by step. Maybe I can quickly find out oh, there is error there. It's a, you know, you forgot to take a two out from the denominator, and the two becomes four. You know, should be right. And it's four times two should be eight. Maybe you forgot that. That's okay, it's a small mistake. The key part will be x minus sine four x divided by four. Okay, <clears throat> this is a, this is a, should be the best, the, the best way to solve the problem. Okay, sine x. We spent so much time on the sine and cosine. The last minute, we're going to talk about tangent x. Okay, tangent term. Integral of a tangent term. Well, we should know that integral of tangent x, right? The integral of tangent x, it's, it's pretty well. Tangent is not a brand new function. I'm familiar with sine cosine, so I change it to sine x, cosine x, dx. Okay, so cosine x is in denominator. That's fine, I treat it like the same way. Then that clearly I should use a substitution, let w to be cosine x, then dw equals negative sine x dx. And after simplifying, just w, sine x dx is negative dw. This is a this is a simple function. So the answer will be I put a pursue value of that, right? And what is W? W is cosine. Alright, so he is this is the answer. One more problem. How about seeking? Now we have to leave at least it was a simple, simple trigonometric function, which we want to integrate, right? And the cotangent x probably do the same way. But secant x, we should have done, right? Secant x was integral of one over cosine x. No one. That's just only one cosine x there. <laughs> I, can I do that? Cosine x. So in order to solve the problem, sometimes you have to make the problem more complicated. Do you know, did, have you heard about this idea? <laughs> Just like if you wanted to solve the problem on the world, you have to make the world more complicated, more troubles, and find, find a way to solve it. Okay, that's what many politicians do. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be, I'm going to be multiplied by cosine. So 
this is more complicated, right? Okay, it's more complicated. Then, then I find out, hey, this is the solution. I let W to be sine x, then dW equals cosine x dx. But how about the denominator? Denominator because cosine x uh, squared is just one over sine squared x, right? So I can get dW, one minus W squared. I totally changed it to something with nothing to do with the sine cosine. All right. Now I can stop here because in the book, it always gives you that this is actually a hyperbolic tangent, the inverse hyperbolic tangent W plus C, okay? Which is going to be uh, sine X plus constant. So it's something to do with the inverse hyperbolic tangent, okay? But the inverse hyperbolic tangent is also, uh, it's going to be, you know, this another expression is going to be half of net log. Okay, I think it's going to be one um, plus sine x, one minus sine x. That's another expression. There are many expressions. Uh, we already know the formula, elementary formula for the inverse of a hyperbolic tangent. So I can change that. But that's, the answer can be changed. Modify, can continue to modify. And finally, finally, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, finally, you can also express in the form integral of absolute value of C and X plus tangent X and plus constant. Yeah, how do we do that? It's, uh, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay. But I just, I just say, just modify my And then uh, you get so many different forms, right?